roshni ka karwa this podcast is brought to you by barrier break solutions private limited and score foundation Hi, my name is George Abraham, and welcome to this edition of Iway Conversations. My guest today is a professor from IIT Delhi. Uh, welcome, Professor uh, Balakrishnan, to the show. Thanks, thanks, for George, for this opportunity to talk to your audience. Uh, let's begin by uh, asking you, uh, how did you get interested in science, and what was your journey? I grew up in a place called Pilani. and there i actually lived in a campus my father worked in an institution a csir lab called central electronics engineering research institute all my father's friends colleagues are all scientists they were all building electronic systems so this was my journey from age 0 to 16 when i entered college so so it was very much like i enjoyed looking at what they were doing they used to have annually an open house where they will sort of throw open and all of us will go of course not when we are very young but definitely from 7 8 9 years we will see what are the type of things they are making in the lab finally ended up studying electronics at uh, bitspilan and after i graduated i had a chance to join iit delhi as a scientist and that was a very important part of my journey which actually finally took me to assistive technology though this uh, lab that i worked on was not an astro technology lab so primarily this lab was working on defense mostly on naval equipment uh, naval defense equipment they were trying to indigenize many of the uh, equipment in defense which they were actually importing at that time from russia or uk and so on and so forth but i started my career not just by building prototypes but actually building systems and which we had to install and show that it actually works on the ships very difficult environment both working in ships and testing them on ships but uh, this was uh, part of my uh, phd journey and that gave me a very different uh, outlook in life so i always uh, like to do things which finally start working in the field how do i get got into assistive technology It was a very very chance meeting with uh, dipendra manocha and uh, manocha met me and at that time he wanted a screen reader for emax emax screen readers at that time were not available and uh, and initially my journey was very sort of not really direct involvement i just used to get some project students and uh, introduce them to the pender and the pender would actually give them some projects and you know my job was to just to broadly supervise them give them the grades so that you know they are happy and they work on the projects but the smart cane change all of it you know the smart cane on board and dot book uh, these three in principle Uh, have the potential of being revolutionary uh, so can you tell us a little bit about each of these products yeah so the smart cane journey started i think almost in 2005 so uh, after working for a couple of years for dependent though he came up with this uh, a need for a device which actually can detect obstacles which are knee above and doesn't have a footprint on the ground so it can actually uh, prevent upper body injuries when people walk with the cane and he said this was a big challenge and there are no solution available and in environments that we live in there are a lot of things which are overhanging there's a tree branch or an open window or a air conditioner room cooler sticking out on a corridor and these are not visible so to say from the cane and so we need a device which is you know near above and we started working on it and of course this very important part of the journey is this student called rohan paul okay so uh no journey is complete till you have you know such bright students who are part of this your team so he was uh, came with a very interesting background both parents being in all india institute of medical science grew up with a very strong background of giving back to society there was a team of course there four people but uh, clearly he provided the leadership and uh, made in the three years that he started you know they started when they were in third year and by fifth year we had many prototypes three or four prototypes and in this journey we also met professor pbm rao who is the other very strong pillar of the lab so because we wanted to prototype and 3d printing had just come to the campus and it was being handled by professor pbm rao's lab so uh, this was uh, 2006 7 
that time period. And we went to Professor P. V. M. Rao, and he was so happy to sort of help us and give his own ideas of 3D prototyping, and you know, came a let's say lifelong partner for us to technology with us. And uh, and then we came up with prototypes. But after the prototypes in Smart Cane, we struggled a lot to actually get into production or anything closer to production because we realized that what students can do we have achieved now we have to actually have an industry partner and we advertised and very interestingly uh, phoenix medical systems uh, shashi kumar from phoenix he actually applied to become a partner two people applied we chose him and once he sort of saw the product and we started discussing, he realized that it requires a bit of investment. And we went from one ministry to another, at least three ministries I, and proposals in partnership with Phoenix. Right. Everywhere the challenge was that they would fund us, but not the industry partner. And then the Welcome Trust came in. What about the product on board? That sounds very interesting too. So the on board was uh, funded by... Tight program, uh, two phases of onboard. So this essentially has uh, visually impaired people to board public buses. And we have done extensive trials in, first started in DMTS buses in Delhi, but then we did a very major trial in Mumbai. 25 buses of best we installed, 21 users. And XRCBC was a major partner. Yeah. Uh, Sam Taraparwala, you know, his team helped us to get the blind users and so on. Yeah. Very successful. Best was very happy with it. They gave us a letter that we will put it on all our 8,000 buses, but we're still looking for funding. We couldn't go beyond it. We came back, again did a set of trials in Delhi, miniaturized it. So it's ready to go for production. And the only thing is the, it's still stuck because nobody wants to fund a large-scale installation. And our idea is unless we do trials with large-scale installation, we cannot go for regulation. Finally, it will be a regulatory requirement that the buses should be accessible. That's the only way the buses will invest. Though the investment is not much, 5,000 rupees per bus is not a big investment. And the user's device will cost three to 400 rupees. And we did not realize it, but though we developed it for visually impaired, it actually helps a range of users. It actually helps any user who needs help for boarding. This particular device, by an audio feedback, alerts the driver and the conductor saying that there is a person who needs help, wants to board the bus. And this was pointed out by not by us, by the best people, uh, Mumbai, that you know your device is more universally applicable than what you claim. If you know of anyone with vision impairment who needs guidance on living life with blindness, please share the IV National Toll Free Helpline number 1800532045. The number is 1-800-5320-469. So what I want to check is that this onboard, is this a one-piece device or there's something yeah. that the uh, that the beneficiary or the blind person also has in, in no, his we hand? We have two solutions. The, so the, now we have a universal solution. Yeah. So we have one is, of course, the device goes on to the bus, which is a basically a controller and a speaker and an RF communication device. It's installed at a prominent place in the bus uh, just next to the entries, uh, front door, entry door, so that people get an audio cue for boarding the bus. The right. other device, either a uh, visually impaired person can use a mobile. The challenge is the range will be very small. Yeah, you can only uh, check the bus around 10 to 15 feet when it is. But if you want a larger distance, then we have a handheld device, which works on RF communication. And it's a very small device. So it is, you know, just like uh, maybe your, you know, slide changer or you know, not much smaller than a TV remote. So, so there are several buses coming, stopping and going. So this device is a very simple user-friendly device. It has only two buttons on it. Yeah. Both Braille marked. One is a query button. Another is a select button. So he, yeah. he or she presses the query button and the query, what it does is it gets an RF sig uh, signal to all, all the buses in the neighborhood, hear that and respond with their own route numbers. This device collects all the route numbers. It is all RF uh, yeah. and reads out the route numbers one by one on the, hand, the device that the user has or on the mobile device. Right. So now the user, if they, any of the route numbers of interest, let's say it reads out 501, and that's of interest, then at that time, he or she presses the select button. As soon as he presses the select button, that particular bus starts speaking out 501 on his speakers. 
right that becomes the audio cue for the even if the bus is moving he can wait for the because the people can sense it's moving audio cue is moving yes and each time he or she presses the button then it will again speak out 501 so he can get oriented towards the entry door and board the bus it's a globally unique device there's no such device we have a patent on it so you know everything is nice about it very uh, inexpensive this is a very fascinating uh, product so let's move on to the next one which is the, your dot book uh, tell us a little the bit about the dot book it's a refreshable braille display yeah so it is uh, it's a commercial name is dot book so it's a refreshable braille display so we had two versions launch which is 20 cell and 40 cell uh, 40 cell is a more interesting one because 20 cell there are now market competition is available alternate devices are available at uh, 16 cell and 20 cell with the braille keyboard but this 40 cell is with the qwerty keyboard so people who are familiar with laptops and so on so forth can very quickly change over to this and is fully featured it has email it has document editor it can you know you can browse the web all of it you can do it on the using the braille 40 cell display the device is functional device is also in low volume production we did have a problem even after the launch we had some problem in terms of reliability of mass production of cells yeah but that's all now sorted out and you know first uh, uh, so we have two orders now we are servicing one order we are almost done 25 units another 25 units uh, export order so that's also going through so the issue essentially is now we have sort of you know, broken the challenges and you know it will scale up now we need uh, basically uh, some type of large uh, some organization which will do a sort of a big volume order because producing in small volumes and selling is always a challenge in this space because you know the costs become very high when you do very small batch sizes so you need to do large batch sizes and we are talking to people and you know if it gets into adip scheme or some other schemes which are useful and at uh, 70000 75000 rupees that's uh, roughly the price of this device so which is uh, anything comparable is 2 and 1/2 to 3 lakh rupees so as i understand it this product though everybody is now talking about computers and e text and all that this uh, dot book actually enables the uh, people to continue to read in braille no so the point is Uh, i am not sure how uh, at any point of time only through audio a person yeah. can learn mathematics right. i you know i don't think it will happen yes audio will replace even for not even for sighted audio is becoming much more common for but if you want to do some serious studies you still have to write and if you have to write you have to read okay correct, correct. how do you read and write without braille so as far as the blind people is concerned braille will remain it will use will come down it has already come down but if it gets completely eliminated i think then lot of professions and lot of education will go away for access will go away because it is still not possible to do lot of things in purely in audio i was reading about the race line foundation so tell us a little bit about this and what does it what does it actually do so race line foundation is actually a non profit startup that we have started which actually is into tactile books and production of tactile books and tactile diagrams so the story is quite interesting when we did the smart cane so at yeah. one point in time we wanted to do manuals for self learning manuals for the visually impaired for smart cane yeah and so uh, our students want to explain how the actually ultrasonic ranging works okay because as part of that manual because that right. was the fundamental thing and they wanted to do diagrams and then this we all of us thought that it must be easy they went from place to place and we realized that how primitive way the diagrams was made and in contrast we also had access to because of this uh, welcome trust funded it and each time we had to a uh, few times we had to go to london to defend the project to make presentation so we were visiting uh, royal national institute of blind rnib in london very frequently what we saw there was fantastic tactile very good quality tactile books in geography and then we realized that the reason there is absolutely nothing here so there are blind schools which are tactile diagrams but this is all the effort of the teachers there who make this diagrams and whenever you know they have the time and energy they make it available to the students but there's no no book available and actually the most of the blind schools will tell their students that diagrams are outside the scope you don't have to bother just bother about the text right which again you know science education is not possible so then we took up a project meti was uh, very helpful they gave us a center of excellence in tactile graphics 
and we reduced the cost of producing these diagrams. So at that time, the diagrams abroad were being produced at around 150 rupees per page. We brought it down to 20 rupees per page. We were the first to use 3D printing for making the tactile, you know, masks, you can say. So the uh, molds, which actually are used for thermoforming. And uh, we created that software and everything associated with it through the Center of Excellence, worked closely with NCRT, converted some of their science books, science and maths books into this and uh, went to some schools and tried with some of the children. They're very happy. Got a lot of feedback, a lot of improvements. And today now we have, uh, uh, so today somebody wants to actually get a book converted into tactile, they just have to approach Raceline Foundation. They will provide end-to-end -end support. To support our work with the blind and visually impaired, you can visit the donate page on our website www.scorefoundation.org.in. Please note www.scorefoundation.org.in. It's really encouraging that uh, IIT Delhi and uh, other pro professional technical institutions are getting into using technology to make life easier for people who are blind and visually impaired. Uh, so uh, what are some of the other projects? We are into three very different and very interesting projects. So one is uh, what we call mobility assistant for visually impaired. So this is a project which is uh, video based and uses all the latest AI techniques to look at mobility issues in the Indian context. Even when I walk on, as, you know, in the campus, which is relatively, I would say, much more safer and not crowded and so on and so forth, it's not unusual to have a dog sleeping on the ground. Okay. Uh, you know, so now uh, it need to be detected. It's a safety issue because you don't want to go and hit the dog. So dogs, uh, cows, uh, signboards, and faces which are familiar. So we have a device which will take a video stream now. Prototypes are there. So there's still to be a lot of work has to be done to optimize them to come to a level where we can use it. So, and it, what it will essentially do is your mobile is your interface, but the device has a camera and it has a very strong processing unit and it's a neural network based. So it's a AI based solution. So they require a lot of computation. But uh, they have been now well trained, and we get you know 90, 95 percent accuracy on most of these tasks. So you know in India the signboards are very often multilingual. For example, Delhi most of the signboards will be Hindi and English. So even to separate, so most of these uh, OCRs will not work because OCRs won't know what language first of all it is and convert some garbage. So we are we are uh, separate it Hindi and English, convert it into, and then create the uh, you know create the information that is actually required for the visually impaired to move. So this is one project which is uh, prototypes are there. It will of course take at least two years to reach a stage where we can say that users can use it. But first set of user trials will start in under three. Second project is a project called Ravi, reading assistant for visually impaired. Again. Our focus has always been looking at STEM. Text issue is solved. So if you have a PDF text document, you can you know, clearly use the present screen readers and there's absolutely no challenge. But when it comes to equations, when it comes to tables, when it comes to diagrams, making it more comprehensible, making it you know, work well is a challenge. And in many cases, the very legacy software has been used. So it's a completely is a more later created document, challenges are less. Word has more challenges. If you take a Word doc and convert to PDF, it has more challenges. But if it's a legacy one, some publishers, old publishers' uh, 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 documents, those are just don't work. So this, we have a set of tools now, which is actually be able to put together in an accessible EPUB format. So a lot of work we have done. So for example, removing. So if there is a, if on the PDF document, you have a, Watermark, this watermark has no use from a visually impaired perspective. That, that will garble the document. How do I identify and remove a watermark? They are running footers or running headers. So say every page has the same or chapter name at the top. That again will garble up the document because they will come at some point in time. And if the user doesn't know it's actually a header or a footer, it will just make nonsense out of it. So cleaning up all of these documents and making mathematics accessible. So this is one set of projects we are going on. And this is uh, uh, 
we have again you know uh, first set of uh, uh, not user trials but at least our own validation trials in a month or two we will begin a lot of tools are ready and uh, it will be a web accessible system you can go to the web deposit your pdf and get it converted and the third project which is i think is a very interesting uh, project is to make indoor spaces accessible now with google and so on and so forth now outdoor spaces mobility has improved for everybody not just for visually impaired but for sighted also and these are accessible because but what do you happen as soon as you go to a public building how do i reach office how do you it's today everybody is dependent so what it works on is it works on uh, basically bluetooth beacons installed at uh, strategic places within the building an indoor map of the building and the map gets downloaded onto your mobile and now we also interfaced it to things like uh, open street maps and later on to google maps so that means it will be a seamless integration between coming from outside entering the building and traveling within the building and going to your own floor and own office that you are interested in so this project is at present on pilot trials at rp center in ames and nab in delhi so we have have the installation and one of the colleges in delhi university has approached us apart from our own uh, sit building that we operate so this is a very preliminary trials so and uh, uh, no i would at some point come and seek the support of the community because just like either we will do it within rlf if we can increase the object of rlf or at some point in time we would actually like to scale it up and create a company out of this effort so that actually buildings become accessible because i strongly believe that what happens in the lab will remain in the lab students will graduate and the project will be wound up you know i i'm also has not much time now to retire and that still will happen so it has to become go out of the lab into a company or you know for profit or non profit that's of course the challenge thank you very much uh, for the time that you given us professor and more power to you and i hope more and more people like you come forward so that young people in our technology space take up uh, you know technology for people with disability as their vocation in life it will be wonderful so thank you very much for your time this podcast was brought to you by barrier break solutions private limited and score foundation ye roshni 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 gar